I have another gas lantern I want to share with you today. Today it is the Camping Moon Year of the Rabbit Special Edition gas lantern. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this product, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Camping Moon for sending out this lantern so that I could share it with you. So we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over its features, its specifications, and how it operates. We'll talk about what is unique about this lantern over their regular camping lantern, also sold by Camping Moon, and it has some special features that are not available on any other gas lantern like this one that I've seen so far. All right, just before we take a closer look at the lantern itself, let me just share with you what it came with. So the lantern did arrive in this presentation box, nice box, laser engraved on the outside of it. Inside the box, there's not a whole lot, simply the operating manual and warranty information. This is the fitted portion of the box, so there's not much to see here. Let me just put that aside. The one other thing that the lantern came with is the refillable gas canister. So this is what sets it aside from their regular gas lantern in their lineup is that they actually include a refillable gas canister with this one, which is kind of nice. We'll talk to this a few minutes in a few minutes time because this is what provides you with some additional versatility to use it beyond just as a lantern itself. Of course, the lantern itself can be used with any other gas canister that has the Lindau valve system on the body or on 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 the body of it of it so yeah it works very well now I uh, will share with you how you refill this and how you use it in a few moments time let me just remove it from the little canister for now so that I can give you some specifications for it so the light itself comes in at 3.7 ounces. The tank itself comes, or 3.7 ounces, 106 grams. The tank comes in at 6.4 ounces or 182 grams empty. You can put as much as 35 grams of fuel in this, and I'll share with you how that's done and some cautions around that in a minute. The height of the lamp itself is 170 millimeters, and the diameter at its widest is 68 millimeters. All right, so I did talk about refilling this canister, and I want to talk to, speak to that before we go on to the demonstration. So in order to fill the gas canister, it will come empty. You will need one of these adapters and these are sold separately. It does not come with the lantern itself. And this little adapter can be purchased in a number of places. Camping Mood has them on their website. And the operation is pretty simple that there is a directional valve or arrow on the top of this to indicate which way the gas will flow. And all you have to do is screw it onto any gas canister for that matter. It wouldn't matter if it's butane, isobutane, or uh, a winter mix at all. This is a winter mix that I have here. Screws onto the top of this. This screws onto the other side. Invert the whole thing upside down like this. Open the valve and gas will flow in. Now there's a little purge valve on the side of this. And what that allows is as pressure starts to build up in the gas canister, um, it's going to force air to the top and you want to release the air to allow room for more gas to go in. So you press this little valve, you'll get a little uh, rush of air coming out. It will smell a little bit like the butane fuel because, of course, it's probably bringing out a small amount with it. But just give it a few shots and then you can continue to fill the canister up. Now, here's the thing. This was only intended to hold 35 grams of fuel. Uh, it's very easy to overfill it, and that's what I'm going to say about it. And I think, uh, well, I, when I demonstrate it, I think I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, it's only intended to hold 35 grams of fuel. It's not all that big in terms of its capacity, but it is quite heavy for its size. One other feature it has on the bottom is a quarter inch 20 thread, which is very similar to what um, ha you have on the bottom of your camera. So you can actually screw this onto any type of tripod or mount that would, like you would a camera. Camera. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, I do have a base for this that I'll share with you in a moment, but you could put it on the end of a tripod if you wanted to have your candle at a height higher than just off of the ground. So yeah, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to demonstrate it first on this small gas canister, so the lantern itself that is, so that I can show you what it really is intended to work like, because I do have a, a small concern that I want to share with you 
in a moment about using this canister. All right, so the operation is pretty simple. Take the glass globe off. It is held on by a couple of um, silicone O-rings on the side here quite firmly. Get your lighter ready. Light the lighter, turn the gas on, and light it up. Now I'm going to turn it back down to about the one inch mark and then I'm put my globe back on and it doesn't matter either both ends of the globe are the same diameter so it doesn't matter which one you put on. All right that's the operation of it and from here you can adjust the flame up or down. I wouldn't take it any higher than that because once you do it starts to throw a little soot at the top of the light so now take it back down a little bit. And that's where I did my testing. So that's about a one inch flame on that. And with this one inch flame, I found that I let it run for an hour because I was interested in what the fuel consumption was. And letting this run for an hour, it only burnt four grams of fuel. So I'd, I'd call that quite fuel efficient. So I guess maybe the question you want to ask yourself is why would you even have a lantern like this? Well, this is something that is more aesthetic in nature than it is functional in terms of it, the amount of light it puts out. As you'll see when I turn the lights off, and when I turn the flame up a little higher, maybe somewhere right around there, I have enough light that I can work at right around at my hand, but it's not going to light up a whole lot. You certainly, I think I would have trouble reading by it, but uh, at least it, what it provides you is a nice warm light around your camp. Now, why would you want this instead of a fire? Well, maybe there is a fire ban on and you're not allowed to have a fire and you have your gas canister to cook with, but it's after supper, it's getting dark. You want to have a light to sit around with, but that you know imitates a fire to a certain degree. Maybe this is what well, the compromise will be. So it's like having a candle, that, but it doesn't consume very much in the way of gas. Of course, I'd still have my headlamps for doing my reading or walking through the woods or anything else. But again, that's the purpose of this. Now I'm going to turn this off, remove it from the gas cylinder, place the other gas cylinder on the bottom, and we'll light her back up. All right, open the valve, turn that down a little bit, there we go, that's working good, put the globe back on, simple right? Um, what I was experiencing when I first started using this is that the flame would die down, rise up, die down, rise up, and I couldn't figure out what it was happening. And what I think was happening is that I had overfilled the small canister. And that's the reason why I brought this to your attention is I found that what you want to do is you want to weigh the canister. You have to have a set of scales to do this safely and properly. Weigh the canister before you fill it, fill it part of the way, take it off of the refill valve and everything, weigh it again, and don't exceed 35 grams in it. Now, I think the weight and the, he the heaviness of this cylinder probably would allow you to exceed it, but what happens when there's, and it seems to happen anyway, when there's an excessive amount of pressure inside of the canister is that you get this growth and down, up and down of the flame, but it's, it's working for me now, but I was having that issue before, so I just wanted to point out that it may be an issue for you. All right, having said this, let me show you some of the versatility that you can use the gas canister for. All right, so I mentioned some versatility with having the small gas canister like this. Well, it should be obvious to most people. How about if we add a small gas canister stove like the Ultralight from Boolin? So let me just screw that on. And get my lighter, turn the gas flow on. Yeah, works great, doesn't it? It works perfectly. All right, let's just turn it all the way down to a low simmer and then off again. So yeah, so that's one thing that you can do with this to get a little bit more versatility out of it. I was interested though, when I saw this, that it's not very big. So even with the small stove, uh, if I wanted to use a pot of any size, is it going to be tippy? Because the diameter of the base is not all that big. So I looked around and I purchased this online. So this is also from Camping Moon. It was not sent to me, but basically it is a little tripod that you can screw on 
onto the bottom of the gas canister using that quarter inch 20 UNC adapter, the same thing as one from a camera. So let me just get this started on here. Has a knurl knob on the bottom. And then I can just fold the legs out and I get that much more stability. Now I did note that there are some small camera tripods that are available that are very inexpensive that you could do exactly the same thing with. The only reason that I wouldn't recommend using them is most of the small ones are made of plastic, this one being made of metal. And uh, I don't know if using this with a plastic tripod, if you put a big pot of water on, if it's going to be a little bit too heavy for it. I suspect it's safe, but I'll put that out there. If you purchase one, that you may want to try it out before you count on it, before you light the, the uh, stove up and, or take a camping, is just to test it out for safety's sake. So, quite a bit of versatility here. Okay, so it's got some versatility, but let's just talk about the practicality of it. All right, let's talk about versatility versus practicality for this little gas canister. So it does have some versatility. You can use it with the lantern, well, that's great. You can put a little gas stove on top of it, and that's great. But how, just how practical is that? Because this does have some weight. I'll give you that in a second again. And it only holds 35 grams of fuel. How long is that gonna last you? You're gonna get a cup of coffee out of it. You may get a meal out of it, maybe two, but that's about it. Then the canister is empty. Yes, you can refill it, but unless you're going to carry another gas canister with you, you're going to wait until you get home to refill this. So there's not a lot of fuel inside of this given the weight for it. When you compare it with a gas canister that you can purchase separately at the store, and yes, I know they're intended to be disposable, but guess what? You can refill these using that same valve adapter, and I actually refilled this one even for this demonstration. So let me just give you some weights by comparison. So earlier I mentioned that this canister weighs 6.4 ounces or 182 grams when it's empty. Add the 35 grams of fuel and full it comes in at 217 grams. Keep that in mind, 217 grams. Now this is a four ounce gas canister, meaning it's holding four ounces of fuel. Four ounces of fuel is 113 grams. So What's that? Almost four times the amount of fuel that the other one will hold. Empty, this weighs three and a half ounces. Remember the other one weighs 6.4. So the empty gas canister, this one, weighs twice what this one weighs empty. So 3.4 ounces or 100 gram. Yet full, it only weighs 7.5 ounces or 213 grams. So once again, 217 grams full, only 35 grams of fuel. 213 grams of fuel, or full, 213 grams fuel, 113 grams of fuel, meaning almost four times the amount of fuel in this as in this. Is this practical? No, it's not really practical at all. It is novel, it is compact, and that's what it's going, going for it. And it's nice looking as well. And I guess one thing you can do with this, of course, is you can screw in a tri tripod on the bottom of it to give it a little more stability. Of course, there are a lot of uh, little expanders, expandable tripods you can put on the bottom of these gas canisters for stability as well. Okay, that's just my thoughts in terms of the practicality versus the versatility of this. Let's wrap this video up. All right, just before we wrap the video up, I thought it might be a good idea to show you what the light looks like when it's turned on, how much illumination it provides so that you can see right now with the light on, it's at that one inch uh, uh, flame. Um, I've got enough illumination to see my hands on the sides. I could do a little work like meal preparation. Not enough an illumination for reading, I don't believe. Uh, uh, certainly not for me anyway. I would sooner use a headlamp for that purpose. But having this on the camp table next to me somewhere, I think it'd make a nice aesthetic to say the least. And again, it may be the only light you can have or the only active flame you can have if it's a uh, fire ban uh, going on. So yeah, it is nice from that point of view. It's Basically, it's a candle, and that's the way to look at it. It's a single candle that you uh, uh, can have at and just have the versatility of having the gas canister to run it on. Okay, now we can wrap this video up. You know, I don't think I mentioned this is model 
T1C28, or Year of the Rabbit Special Edition. I did say that, but I didn't give it the model number. So again, they do have two lanterns. And the reason I point that out again is because unless you really feel that the gas canister itself is something that you just have to have, practicality-wise, it's not worth the extra money to purchase the gas canister. I mean, I like it. It's fun. It's nice. But just for the difference in price, I think I'd go with just the lamp by itself and then buy a four ounce canister to go with it if size is of concern to you. Because you're going to get a lot more out of that four ounce canister than you are out of this little one. Okay, overall impressions of this, very well built, very high quality, very functional. It does work. It's very simple. There's not a lot to go wrong with it. Um, I quite like it. I like the aesthetic of having that flame. It's a lot like having one of those UCO candle lanterns or any other candle for that matter. It is protected from the wind. It works. It works as the simplest, easiest way to state it. Very attractive little device, but it does have weight because of that little canister. Okay, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. I will, of course, be putting the links to where you can purchase this and where I purchased this separately from uh, the, the lantern itself. And I'll put where that you can purchase one of these valves as well. And you've all seen these before, the Boolin ultralight uh, stove, titanium stove. But if I can find the link, I'll put that also in the video description, as well as the specifications for this lamp. All right, that's enough for today. Get out and explore and take that path. Let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.